Jesus brings up an interesting point. Mormonism teaches that all humankind, every individual, lived before this life as a spirit child of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. And that those of us who are on this earth, no matter who we are, all of us agreed to their plan. And because we've agreed to that plan and come here, we are born children of God. They sing a song, I'm a child of God and he has sent me here. And that song is all about being children of God. Now, here is the main point right off the bat. Why do we need to be born again if we are born children of God? What is the purpose? Why is Jesus saying you have to be born again? See, the LDS say your spirit comes from God. It is cleansed. It is perfect when it comes there. Even though you might be born into a different state because of how you acted in that pre-existence, you still come here perfect. Why must you be born again? And so therefore, being born again is, is rarely taught. It is mentioned a couple times in a certain context in studying the Book of Mormon, but it is rarely taught as an imperative to... Uh, see the kingdom of God. Because why would you need to be born again if you're born a child of God? We'll see in the Christian context, Jesus is saying, listen, every person that is born in the flesh here is sinful because Adam brought this world into sin. And we are not children of God. We are sinful creatures. Therefore, except unless a man and a woman is born again, they will not see the kingdom of God. What does that mean? It means spiritual regeneration. How does that come about? It, will come, it would come about in Nicodemus' case for him to say, you know, I realize now that I haven't been able to keep the law, that I am a sinful man. Lord, I need you. Lord, save me and cry out to Jesus. And God gives you a new heart and a new spirit. And that is spiritual rebirth that Jesus is talking about. Now, one more point before we go to prayer. You notice that Jesus says you must be born again. If it meant that you, are, that you are born okay in the first place, like the LDS say, and then you overcome your failures progressively and you overcome sin through a process of sanctification throughout your life, if that's what he was referring to, he wouldn't say born again. Any woman who has ever given birth to a child, it's not something that takes a lifetime. It happens immediately. You go into labor, the child's born. And, and that's why Jesus uses born again uh, in this uh, analogy. You have to have that experience where your heart is regenerated and it's, uh, and it's an immediate experience. How it manifests itself in individuals is all up to God and how it works, he's working with you. But it is an immediate experience where then, over the process of your life, you, uh, in your flesh, if you're allowed to tarry, become sanctified by the Holy Spirit working with you to overcome your flesh, with Jesus as your leader and guide. So you have to understand these nuances this is what are there in back. Scripture. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Speaking of water rites, water birth, even, even water ablutions the Jews did, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again, referring to spiritual rebirth of the Holy Spirit moving in. Then to show uh, fleshly birth or rights have nothing to do with organized religion or man or their rights. Um, listen to what he says. It's very clear in verse eight. The wind blows where it wants and you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes or where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit, or so is everyone that is born again. It's talking about spiritual regeneration that comes by virtue of belief, God bestowing it upon a person, they are born again, and it's spirit. it has nothing to do with the water rites. Um, when it comes to the LDS, they plainly and errantly state that being born again comes by and through religious ordinances. Listen to what Joseph Smith said. Being born again comes by the Spirit of God through ordinances. Ordinances. That's how you get it. Teachings of the Prophet, page 162. Jesus says you can't tell when or where the Holy Spirit's going to work. You can see its workings among the trees and things, but you can't tell how it's happening. And Joseph said it happens by religious ordinances. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to follow? 